this episode of Live WPTV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Um, so welcome to the Boston WordPress Meetup. Uh, if you have not been here before, thanks thanks for coming. This is a we don't typically meet right on this floor. It's usually the first floor, but sometimes we get this great large space. Um, we are we meet on the last Monday of every month. Here's the Wi-Fi code, our website, our Twitter handle, hashtag, follow us, join the website. Um, we always give a shout out to the Nerd Center for letting us be here. Great venue and accommodations. We used to have free pizza, so if you came for that, we no longer have that. Um, from Microsoft. So since 2008, they've been really great in giving us tons of free pizza. Um, we're going to have to find another way to fund that. We're not quite sure. You can always donate, but uh, in the meantime, we don't. Um, HostGator. HostGator is one of our sponsors. Um, check them out. They have a really easy one-click install that we recommend for a lot of people. Um, use the code BostonWP Meetup for a 25% discount. Uh, we also have our theme repository for those who, of you who would like to try one of the frameworks. Visit um, bostonwpdemo.com, and if you see a theme there that piques your interest, send us an email, and we'll try to set you up with an account. Uh, WordCamp Boston. So for those of you who attended or those of you who didn't attend, um, right now the videos are hosted at this URL, lip.tv slash bostonwp. And uh, coming soon, um, all the videos will be here at wordpress.tv slash event slash wordcamp boston hyphen 2011. Um, once all the videos are up here on wordpress.tv, they will be coming down off of our blip.tv site since they own the rights of the videos. So LiveWP.tv is a side project of Kurt and I. If you don't know about it, you're missing out. And if you do know about it, um, hopefully we've seen you there. Basically, we show up at a bar or a pub every month, and we we drink with you guys and talk about WordPress and all kinds of stuff informally. So you can ask us questions, and it's live streamed um, on the internet. So it's fun, and we get companies to sponsor uh, food, and we have, we try to have food for you guys and stuff. We have we did not do it uh, in the last month. We'll schedule another time to do it in October. We'll let you know. Follow us um, on Twitter and go to the website. We'll let you know where it is. It'll be in the Boston and Cambridge area. Yes, they're available at the website. This is our call to action. Help Boston WordPress meet up. So uh, now that we no longer have pizza, you know, we were starting to look for donations. Um, if you guys are willing to help us out, uh, you can, there's a link on the bostonwp.org site. Um, not only will you help us with funny pizza, some of the meetup costs, domain, host, uh, video hosting, and all that good stuff. So we're, try we're still trying to work out some of the uh, donation levels, um, what you get for each particular level. But if you, if you donate now, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to retroactively add you to those. Areas. Yeah, since we started, I mean, we never wanted to charge people for Meetup. So a lot of groups do that. They collect money on meetup.com. You have to pay like five dollars to come to each event. So we never wanted to do that. Um, now we're asking for donations, and we have to do that. But you know, just so you know, like meetup costs us uh, money and you know hosting and things. So this is our way of keep trying to keep the meetups free. We'll do it as you know as much as we can. Right. Next month, there's a lot to do next month. So. Our next meetup is uh, Monday, October 31st. If we get enough donations and if people dress up, we'll give prizes away. Um, it is Halloween, so try and find us. We might, we might dress up. I might dress up. Um, Tech Day Camp it, uh, is run by Tom and Rago in the back. Um, it starts at $99. Um, and their slogan is because technology should work for you. Um, check them out, they have a great lineup of speakers. Um, and we'll be there as well, giving a talk. 
part of the great lineup. Hmm? You're part of the great lineup. Yes, yes, we're part of the great lineup. Not there. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm sorry, I forgot to update this slide. The price was up after that. I think it is 109 dollars now. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, we will also have a beginner's workshop following at, uh, after that. Um, the prices do be determined, as well as the venue. Um, just be sure to follow us on Twitter at BostonWP or check the emails from the meetup group. Um, and our live WP again, that's to be determined. Uh, it will be somewhere in the Boston Cambridge area and the date's to be determined, but we should have something somewhat soon. Um, so we started a, a series of webinars online, um, and be sure to check for that as well. Um, you might be able to start giving some remote support in the future. Yeah, so it's tough with everybody having different um, you know, skill levels and things. So if you feel like you're a beginner and you don't know what's going on, or you want to kind of learn WordPress comprehensively before you start coming to more intermediate sessions, um, that's why we run the workshops and the webinars. All right, so expert zone. Um, this will be run the same time as the, the plugin uh, mashup or, or roundtable. Um, James is one expert. Ken is also another. And Greg is in, Gregory in the back. But he is another expert. Um, I, is there anybody else? I forgot to check the list. All right. So they'll be set up somewhere either upstairs or in the back. Um, feel free to. Uh, Ask some questions and please be sure to thank you for coming here. Yeah, and once again, if you're new, we, we've been doing this thing where we run two sessions simultaneously. So you come here, we announce a few things, and then we split. Um, we have one session here, and we have an expert session. Um, so we try to do that to cater to coding, non coding, beginner, advanced, things like that. And it was a little different this particular month. Um, our speaker last week was only able to make it that day, so we had to make an exception to. Uh, have a separate meetup for that. The video will be online somewhat soon. I uh, think it's done. I just need to upload it. And finally, the plug-in roundtable. Um, if you guys want to stick around right here, we'll be giving the talk, and that uh, will go through a lot of the plugins. That's okay. So, expert zone. That's it. Any questions before we go? Or break up? All right. All right. So. When you registered or RSVP for the meetup, um, I had asked you guys to uh, use the link to try and fill in some of your, your favorite plugins um, that, that you like. And we have another viewer here. So, what I wanted to do was just go through um, some of these. And if, if one of these is yours, please shout, shout out. Um, and I'd like to get your feedback and your input on why you like or why you like this plugin or why you chose this particular plugin. Because there might be some other ones out there that might be better, uh, they might be worse. Right? So the first one, um, Page Link Manager. And what it's supposed to do, it's supposed to set up easy navigation links. Um, let's go to the site. And what it's supposed to do is really just somewhat change your menu bar. Um, it's almost like a customizable menu where you can lay out, lay out your pages separately or try and organize them in a, in a reasonable fashion. Um, I'm not quite sure if you really need a plugin for this, um, but it is something easier if you don't want it to be ground with different menus and customizing your own menus. Um, I don't know if anyone's had any experience with this. I use the plugin because I don't know the difference between the menu and the page. So I wanted to have the menus that I can click on the top uh, navigation bar, mm -hmm. and that's what I use to to go to different places. Yep. So what other way you said you don't need you don't need that? What other ways I can do?
go to my site since I forgot the password to the, uh, the demo site. Um, really, we'll, if you go into the customized menus, I know, I, I can never remember my passwords. Um, so under appearance, there's a menus tab. And this is where you can actually customize your, your, your menu. You can organize it any way you want. So you can see here, I have my home menu on the right. And you can see home, updates, how to, food, tech. And that's where you can click and drag your separate pages or categories where you want to. So could you show me your page? So this is the menu up here. Yes. So it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's the same thing. It, it, it makes it a little bit easier if you don't want to go into making your own menu. The plugin will actually help you do that. Um, you don't necessarily need it. If you if you want to go ahead and try and figure out menus, it's, it's a little easier. Does, does the standard menu allow you to add and load these in a different section? No, it does not, and that's theme specific. Um, so a lot of themes, but, but but you customize where you put that navigation bar. Um, the standard 2011 theme, I don't think, lets you do that. Does the one that you use, does that include what's the navigation bar, where you want it? Always on the top. Yeah. Okay. Thesis allows you to move your navigation bar. So the comment was Thesis allows you to move your... Yeah, Thesis allows you to uh, move your navigation bar. Uh, and Thesis is a premium theme. Um, the next one, favicon generator. Does anyone know what a favicon is? So these little um, let's, let's let me find it. So these little icons up here. If you can see my little tabs, the meetup tab here, and if you look at the uh, W here under this tab, those are favicons, and those are actually loaded whenever you pull the website. So you can have your own customizable, I think it's 16 pixel by 16 pixel image um, anytime somebody comes to, your, comes to your site. So if you can see here, you can see my bookmarks bar. All of these are small little catalogs, and I can identify each one of these sites just based on the icon. So if someone favorites your site but wants to drag down to, your, to their uh, bookmarks bar, they'll be able to see your icon, and you'll be able to write that for you. Yes? Does it? Yes. So I'm wondering if there is a plugin, if that plugin, or another Fabricon plugin. Sorry. Right, going to come around the Thank you. <laughs> my, point, my point question was. My point. You should, you should be up. My point. My point or question was that the code for Fabicon insertion has to be a specific um, specific way for Internet Explorer to recognize it and render it. And what I've seen in a lot of the Fabicon generators is it's great. So most of the people here that are on Macs don't realize that when you open up IE8, IE9, the Fabicons aren't showing because the code's not correct from this plugin. So I want to make the point that if you want your favicon in an Internet Explorer, where most people will be seeing the site, um, I would check that one. And there may be a best favicon plugin for that that really goes after that. So been that, this plugin's been downloaded about 16,000 times. has a three-star rating. There's only 13 ratings. Um, there's not enough data here. Uh, my suggestion is if you really want a small little icon to personalize your site, really personalize your site. Um, open up a, an image editor, even, even Microsoft Paint or, or GIMP, um, make a 
16 by 16 uh, image, 16 pixel by 16 pixel image. Um, and when you go into your uh, your hosting control panel, you can upload that particular Favicon and it's, it's a specific name. It's, um, I think it's favicon.ico. And if you upload that to the root directory, you should be able to just pull it out. Most browsers recognize that. I'm not sure if that's, if that's still true with IE. Uh, I That's good to know. So there are other ways around around it without having to use plugins. All right. The next one is one flash gallery, which is a photo gallery. So apparently, there's a lot of. I guess this developer has a lot of different plugin photo galleries. Um, the one thing that I will say immediately is that if it is Flash, a lot of these sites will not render in like it's iPhones, iPads, or even some other mobile devices. So be careful if you are installing one of these plugins. Um, you might run into some trouble with some of them on your site on a mobile device. Uh, there are some other ones. I know there's another plugin further down. Um, Ken had suggested NextGen Gallery. Um, this uses a light box. Uh, I think it's it's not Java, it's jQuery to pull up images. They present the whole format. Let me see. And this is what the next gen gallery does. So what it does is it, it, it displays images and you can do it should automatically scroll through. Or if you click through, you get to see the next image. Keep everything on one page and have your own little gallery. One of the things that I did notice when we went to the plugin directory was that this plugin has been downloaded almost 4 million times. And it has a 4 star rating. So if you are seriously interested in installing some type of photo gallery, you might want to try and consider it first. Tom gives it a thumbs up. <laughs> Does anybody else have any other photo plugins that they might use? Slideshow. Slideshow? Okay. Widget context. Shows hides content in specific sidebars. Um, do you want to say something a little about it? Where's the microphone? Oh. I'm, I'm pretty new at this, but so I've been exploring all the, all the plugins, but I didn't want to have the same uh, sidebar, same widgets on all the pages. So this, you can... Um, you have your sidebar, and then if you want certain widgets or certain content or certain pages to show up um, on different pages, different pages, um, it allows you to pick and choose. And it's, I just think it's great. No, and it's great, especially if you want fresh new content for each individual page or, for example, a post. Um, you might not want the same content there. Yeah, you, can, you can put in different um, Photos, say, on different pages, or different artwork, or different, um, different anything. Does anyone know how that compares with widget logic? I was going to ask the same question. How does that compare with widget logic? Widget logic does the same thing, but it might be more established. This one, yeah. Yeah. about 60,000 downloads. So it's it's a five star rating, 62 rating. So it, it seems like it's pretty good. Widget Logic, I think there's a lot more support because I think it might have picked up press first, um, and that's why people rave about it. Um, I'm not quite sure because I actually haven't used either one of them. Um, I'm sure they pretty much do the same thing. Um, Widget Logic might be tailored to specific themes where there are preset widgets, 
and so you might be locked in. I'm not sure if this one locks you into the theme specific widget. Uh, I don't think so because I've used it on several different themes that I've been trying out. Okay. Downloads, four star rating, 363. So, it, it's okay. so they're both good. I mean, it, you just have to choose your own, right? It's whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, Ken has talked about the all in one SEO pack. Who uses this particular plugin? How much time do you spend on your all-in-one SEO? When you, when you, after you write your post, there usually is a, a small field underneath for keywords or, or specific headers. Um, how active are you in, in using this? Pretty active? Pretty active? It's been a while. It's been a while? How about, how about you? Do you, do you use a, do you spend the time to fill in particular keywords? I'm using it for web pages. Okay. So I use it to optimize the pages and then, you know, the client app is Okay. So there's one caveat to this plugin. It's a great plugin. But you have to put the time and effort into um, adding each particular field or, the, or keywords for the plugin to actually work. It, it's not a magic plugin that you can install and you immediately have awesome SEO for your site. No, absolutely. Yeah. Some people might think that by downloading this plugin, it automatically increases right. SEO. Okay. And, and, and that's not the truth. There's no magic plugin that will do that. It's it's all relative to how much time and effort you put into this particular plugin to get that result. For somebody who really doesn't know what So search engine optimization is it's how um, you show you show up on, on like a search engine like Google or Bing. Or, I'm going to refer you to a bunch of videos because I'm not an SEO expert. Um, come see me afterwards and I'll, I'll give you some links for that. It is. It is. It, 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 it. Blueberry Power Press. So does anybody have a podcast, an audio podcast? Their site? Like you, so Blueberry is a, a service where they host a podcast, and they have a plugin that integrates in with WordPress, so you can just put in your podcast without having to upload the upload the uh, the audio file to your server. And this kind of saves on bandwidth um, and, and server resources, especially when people are trying to visit your site. Um, instead of having them to load your particular audio file there, it's hosted somewhere else. Yeah, only they have a, a nice plugin to integrate it. Is it just audio? Uh, yeah, I guess it is. Because last time I, I, I used them with the pod, I can't forward. And they, they only had audio, so they, I guess they do have video now. Does anybody use anything else for for video besides? Uh, does anybody self-host their video?
it's hard because I think a lot of these custom galleries, like like Next Gen or One Flash Gallery, if you get a theme that has a specific rotating gallery or parasol of photos, um, some of these plugins either might override overwrite that and override that, or the actual theme will come up first over the plugin, so they might they're in competition with each other. So there are times when they won't work and you have to choose one or the other. This one, I've never heard of this one, and I, I, I'm glad that Ken brought this up. Exec PHP. Has anybody used this? Because it apparently lets you use PHP code in post pages and widgets within um, your, your post window. So, so when you create a post, or page, or widget, just like a widget, uh, like a text widget on your sidebar, where you can put HTML code. Um, instead, you can you can um, add your PHP code directly in here into the HTML tab, which I actually find very interesting. Well, maybe you want some custom fields. Uh, maybe you want to create a form and have have it send the, the user's maybe email, but send it somewhere else. Um, you might be able to do it like that. Uh, maybe you want to add some. I, I don't want to go too much into it since it, since it goes into a, some of the, it is more for coding, yes. That's important to have model enabled. Say again? That's important to have servers to have model enabled. It should, it should enable, yes. Any servers want to allow that? Okay. That's good to know. So yeah, many servers might not enable it. Um, maybe a self-hosted server, like uh, if you have your own virtual private server, it might it might work. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I haven't tried this, so but that, that's a good idea. I'm just going to skip next gen galleries to go over it. Um, sh oh, short code ultimate. Um, anybody use short codes on your site? Do you create your own short codes? Um, so apparently, this allows you to, or it has built in a lot of different short codes so that you can you can take advantage of, of particular links to posts, links to pages. A lot of that's already built into WordPress um, with a, with a big 3.2, where you can link particular posts and just putting in the, the square brackets. Um, so again, a lot of these short codes are, should already be built in, and, and a lot of this is under the HTML tab. Um, I, I actually don't know whether or not this might be a good short, short code uh, plugin to use. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head the, the uh, plugin that John Bishop uses. He gave a talk um, two months ago about short codes. Um, he has a great plugin, uh, and I would check, check that video out. Up there all the time, and uh, it's just a calendar. 
If I saw, as I said, if I saw the guy's name, I don't know. We use it all the time. Yep. Another option, instead of using a uh, instead of using a plugin, um, Boston tweet up. Uh, Postling uses uh, just a Google Calendar. So he creates events and lists all the events and all the meetups that's going on around Boston. And you can just scroll through and see all the different meetups. And what he does, it's really easy for him to just, especially if it's on like meetup.com or, or another site, it's easy for him to just link that um, event onto a site. Um, it, it's just another option instead of having to use a plugin. Um, sometimes the plugins do make it easier though because with Google it doesn't give you or doesn't let the readers know you know what what events are coming up next, what events are tomorrow or today or next week. You actually have to proactively go to the calendar and check it out. You can. You can. It's pretty slow. If you want that Exactly. It gets to the point, you know, you can see on Thursday there's a lot of overlapping meetups here. I don't know how I'd want that money. There was another one. There was another plugin. Uh, Events Manager Extended. Thank you. I do not use half of its functionality, but we do um, we do use it on almost all of our web pages. Basically, the events get put on pages by the category, event category, and it rolls the event away once it's passed. Uh, you can set how many events you want on this particular widget area, uh, and you can. There's a way to have people subscribe to them so they can and put them in a, a calendar. I haven't figured out how to use that yet. But <laughs> it's pretty cool. But it gives you the functionality to do so. Okay. But. So what's your philosophy on the widgets themselves? I mean, because I've got dozens of WordPress sites, and all of a sudden, when you go to the site and things down, you know, oh, I've got the big plug in. So then I basically have to put myself on a maintenance mode and just go back in and check and keep updating the plug in, which is a whole thing of that. It is. And, and it's like, it's time consuming. Compromising at the same time, so it's like, well, this kind of what happens is those plugins are, can be useful when you when you first put them in, but after a while they sort of lose some of them lose their functionality, and if they lose their functionality, it's like you sort of forget about them and you don't update them, and it's like, you know, what's your philosophy on the number of widgets and managing them after you've installed? Them? So widgets are a little bit different than the plugins. So we. Well, I mean, I mean, so okay. So I meant widgets. No, I meant plugins. Plugins. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So some plugins are are add widgets. Um, so the, for general load times, I think it, it's a page of plugins, um, not all active. I think. A good rule of practice is to have about nine plugins active. Um, one of them should always be a Kismet, the, um, the spam blocker. Um, that should always be there. Um, but the more plugins you look, you actually have active on your site, the more time it takes for service to pull up each individual plugin. It the site. It does. Poor user experience. like that when the pages are loaded. No, and exactly, and and if you happen to find a plugin that you're not using for a while, um, and, and it's been disabled for a couple of months, uh, my recommendation would be just delete it, get it off the server, um, just so you know clears up some space. But it, you know, WordPress has, has to recognize, all right, this particular plugin's here, but it's disabled. It's using some time, even though it's you know in milliseconds. When you add up all these plugins, if you have you know happen to have hundreds installed. Um, it will slow down your site. Roughly not. How many WordPress sites do you personally have and how do you keep up with them? I don't know. <laughs> um, there's a lot of sites. Um, as far as up, 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 updating plugins, um, whenever you log into the dashboard and see the little update button, I just select them all and hit update, move to the next site. 
Um, I, I check every once in a while. I, I've been really bad at updating all my sites. So maybe a plugin would be to create an email that would send you out an email and then they get. That would be a great plugin. However, you know, with with every new revision of WordPress, you'll see a lot of emails that day, right? So if, if it goes from WordPress 3.2 to WordPress 3.3, you know, every plugin that you have, you probably have a new update. You'll be spammed with just all these emails. Um, I, I would check on a weekly basis, you know, once a week, make sure that everything's working before you absolutely have to update. Uh, Um, my recommendation to people is just to use as few plugins as possible. Um, and we think about, do you really need a plugin to do this thing? Um, if you read the description for half the plugins, it just connected to functionality that's already built into WordPress. You know, um, so part of it is to think about whether you, uh, you even need a plugin at, at all for whatever, for whatever thing. Um, and if you do need a plugin, it should only really be for mission critical, important things on your site. Um, one of the things I run into a lot with you know, clients and stuff is um, sort of like what um, Kurt was just mentioning. Stuff breaks, things go out of date, you know, and that's update of uh, WordPress breaks a lot of things. Um, the fewer plugins you have, the less likely it is you're going to run into that problem. Um, and think about you know, whether or not that's even um, a necessary thing. Um, and also plugins can conflict with each other, and that's another problem that, um, you know, it's like in the old days with extensions conflicting on, you have classic version of the Mac operating system or uh, Windows 95, things like that. Then you have to, get, so now you're adding more support and debugging time, because now one plugin is conflict with another plugin. So again, just, you know, I, I say use as few as you can get away with. And then if you're gonna have stuff, use to stuff like Kismet and other sort of like um, security and backup and things like that. Not so much on, you know, um, glitzy, glam, you know, things that look cool, but don't really add any functionality to your site, or just slow things down. Um, and not providing any protection with security or allowing you backup your WordPress database or whatever. So that's what I would say. A lot of premium themes now offer, you know, the sidebar widget, photo gallery, or insert your podcast or, or audio cast here, so um, a lot of things specific and then you can just use the plugins and fill in the gaps here and there. But like I mentioned, you know, backups are, are always big. Um, I always like to change my comment system. Um, so I use Discuss or Intense Debate, which is an easier way for people to connect onto your site. Um, and then it was good. So yeah, one of the one of so one of the ones right here we're ready to put in uh, WordPress DB backup. This is a database backup. Um, it only backs up your database. Um, the stuff you see on your server behind the scenes, it backs up and it saves it to your computer. Um, the other half of WordPress is the actual files, your pictures, your images, um, your file structure, your themes, plugins. Um, all of that is kept on your server. So as long as you can remember to back up not only your files, but the database, you should be able to recover it if you know, your site goes down and you make any errors on your site. Um, like at the university. Sorry. Do you have a choice among um, file formats for the backup? Or is it just SQL? Is it um, well, the backups are for the SQL database. Um, some plugins, Backup Buddy. Backup Buddy does allow you to back up your sites. Um, it is a premium plugin. I think it's fifty or sixty dollars for two site license. Um, it allows you to back up not only your files but your database, and it allows you to save these files, and databases, on either another server, um, a cloud hosting service like Amazon. Um, your own computer. It can do. It can schedule backups on a nightly basis, on a weekly basis. Um, the choice is up to you on where you want to store the files and how often. Um, so it does give you that flexibility. And the other back, the other uh, backup plugin is uh, Vault Press, which is an automatic product that's a little bit pricey. It's about twenty dollars a month. Um, they. 
Um, they store all their backup files um, on, on multiple servers across the country. And um, one of the nice things that they do is if your site, if they can't connect to your site, if they find out your site's down, they send you an email saying, hey, we haven't been able to connect to your site. Is everything okay? I've gotten emails from them saying, hey, listen, your site's been down for a month. Make sure everything's okay. Uh, we can't connect. Um, so they, they, they proactively watch out for you. Um, it, it also backs up in real time. It does back up in real time. So, I think you know, it's not a weekly or anything. You every know. hour and then on a daily basis. Yep. It's like, so, it's like time machine mode. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, so before you spend the money, it, it, it's a good idea to think about how valuable is your content and is your site. If you've got years worth of content, you know, I wouldn't hesitate in spending money for, for premium backup service um, because I've invested so much time and money you know, just building my site. Um, to me, I think it's worth it. Now, for, if you're starting out, maybe you want to start off with uh, you know, the WPDB backup. And as you grow, you grow with your site, you might want to think about Backup Buddy or, or Vault Press. Which one? The last one. Vault Press? V-A-U-L-T. Vault Press. Vault -press. Yeah, the, the clock moves. So you can see the last snapshot was 8.15, four minutes ago. Uh, the next one I wanted to go through was a Vocalize, which, I've, I've, which uh, was an interesting plugin. It converts your blog articles to audio podcasts and audio streams. Um, so if you're really interested in, if you write a lot of content and you write a lot of stories, um, it might be, it might be interesting to take a look at this plugin, um, especially if people can subscribe to it via iTunes. Um, you know, it's, it's just another easy way instead of having to sit down and read for a site and just pop it on in your car or pop, it, pop on some headphones and, and catch up with some, some posts. How does it work and uh, what, does it, what does it do? So um, basically it transcribes your individual posts into a voice and then it records. It's like a computer voice. Or actually I don't know much about this. Maybe it's, maybe it's a person who actually sits down and reads your... Oh, sorry, microphone. Hello everyone. Well, um, the uh, founder of Vocalize was here a few months ago. Uh, it was in the past few months. And he's offering Vocalize free to WordPress for the time being. I think um, he's um, you know, seeking some venture capital to develop his company. But what, how he described it is um, it's basically going to make your blog available to people who don't have time to read it, but they can listen to it. So, like working parents, they might have the computer on in the background while they're tending to their kids, and your blog would be able to come through as an audio feed. I, I heard it, yeah. So it's not—it's a pleasant voice reading it. So I guess it's like a computerized voice, but it's not uh, really unnatural or anything. It sounded pretty good, actually. He gave us a couple of samples. So um, yeah. So the thing is, I guess it's good to get it now while it's free. So. Recommend exploring. If you try it, let me know. I want to know. <laughs> okay, Gravity Forms. Does anybody use Gravity Forms? How do you like it? Year, and that's when we bought them, so we got it at half price, which is really great too. Yep. And I was having a problem with one form recently, and I emailed them, and they emailed me right back, and they sent me the newest version that, that I needed, and it's been great. So there gravity, are a lot of forms on that. Yep, Gravity Forms is another premium theme. Um, is it thirty dollars or is it forty dollars for one license? license I, think it's 200. I have a developer's license, so I think it's two hundred. So I think I paid ninety-nine for it. 
And I, now I think there is, is a yearly subscription rate now. Um, yeah, it's at the business. Person, personal, $40. Yeah, for to use on one site. Um, it's just a nice, easy way to create forms for your site. If someone wants to contact you, if you have, if you want to make a poll, it's just a, a faster way to, uh, to collect that data. Um, because as soon as you, you uh, collect that information, and as soon as people go to your forms and fill out the information, it gets pulled into almost like a separate um, <coughs> custom post type, where you can go through and view each individual response and you can also export that response into an XML format, so you can import to Excel or uh, some other database. What's that, what's that great for my clients is that the email address, they can, they can export out all the email addresses and send out a bulk email or put it into constant contact or whatever, mm -hmm. it works out great. Did you have a Are there any good non-premium uh, form forms? Um, non-premium forms. Contact, contact, contact forms. Yeah, yeah, that's the only one that I. The only the, the, the good part about the gravity forms is it's, it's drag and drop. So if you want to move your different fields anywhere, you can just click and drag. Um, they they just made it made the interface a lot easier to use. W3 total cash. Does anybody use a caching service on their on their site? No? So Wufu forms for WordPress? So WooFoo forms for WordPress? Um, is that free too? Um, it's free, it's free, right? It's free. Start for free. If you need other services, you can add them on later, but you can start for free. Okay. So W3 total cache, um, apparently it is the best server-side caching plugin available. So does anybody know about caching? So caching a website, so what, what this plugin does is that um, whenever you create a post um, on your site, W3 total cache takes a snapshot of this particular site, of your site. And whenever a user comes in, hits your site, it loads this cache, this shortened, smaller, almost like a picture file, rather than pulling each individual individual file. So it takes a lot less resources to pull this pull from the cache, rather than um, you know pulling each individual file. Instead of WordPress dynamically generating each post, it makes a version that a static version that just gets downloaded. So a static file is much quicker to download than generating the file from scratch every time. This is why many WordPress sites go down when they get linked to by during Firewall or by Dig or by some other site that's gonna drive thousands of people to your site. Because when you get over a certain amount of traffic, WordPress can't really handle that in, in a default configuration. So you have to have some kind of mechanism to deal with that. Caching is the easiest and simplest way of dealing with that. So it makes basically make a static version of your website uh, for posts that you know can get sucked down much quicker than you could generate them dynamically. It's not just WordPress not being able to handle the number of visitors hitting your site, it's also the, your server. So your server might be overloaded, caching will just help it out. Daniel here? There's two there's two caching plugins WP Super Cache versus the uh, W3. They're, they're both somewhat the same. Um, I've seen them both. I think a lot of new um, some hosting services when you install WordPress automatically install W3 Total Cache um, and it comes with it. I, I've seen some separate installs that that when you're hosting that's it. Right. Some methods are not compatible. Hosting service, so, right? But if you if you need caching, you kind of already know you need caching. You know, because you would already know that if you're getting so much traffic that it's going to be a problem for you. <laughs> 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 it should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's
either one either one will work. Um, there's nothing wrong with, with either one of them. They're both free. They both do their job. Um, is one better than the other? I can't tell you. Well, it's just pointed out. Sometimes it's just the server. Don't download both and install it. I used a, a cache uh, plugin, and um, I was having a problem when I was updating my posts and then looking at the website for my updates. I wasn't seeing them until I logged out of my browser and logged back in. And then uh, you guys pointed out you should turn that off um, when you're updating. Yes. If it changes, yes. And turn it back on. That's the one caveat with the cache is that if you are changing. If you're changing maybe some colors in your site, your fonts, uh, some different widgets, um, they won't show up right away because that cache already has a snapshot of what your site looked like before. So you need to one, disable your, your plugin, and two, delete your cache, and also delete the cache off of your, uh, your browser just to ensure that you know, everything is clean. And as soon as you refresh your site, you'll, you'll see those updates. Is it team based or a, it, it's watching the database and when you have new posts, it's in app and catch again? Yeah. Wait, what's the mechanism to, to renew the, the snapshot? So uh, there's normally a timeout option. Um, I think it's every six or eight minutes it takes a new snapshot. Um, so, it, I mean, if, if your site's being constantly pinged, They'll just load that snapshot until it's updated again. But at that point, I think if your site's being bogged down enough where everyone's going to you know, a particular page on your site, you're not going to be updating it right away. Um, so there's really no need to, to have that update or, or that refresh, constant refresh. Um, but on the, the code side, I have no idea of whether it pulls from the database or it pulls in from uh, it has to be basically the first time. Yeah, the first time. you generate a view, right? You've never. The way it works is first time you visit your site, and then you look at a post on your site, and it's never been pulled up before, it's time to cache, and it gets generated. And then from that point forward, every time anybody looks at that particular post or article, they don't pull the live version, they pull the cache version. You can pull thousands and thousands of those, you know. But it's a, comments are dynamic things that are AI. Comments are different. Comments, right, yeah. yeah. Depending on, like, it was just saying, you know, what comments are you using? Because most of those, if you use Discuss or you use, what's the other one? The other the, the one? Intense debate. Intense debate is the other. Is, but, you know, those are all hosted outside anyway. So those, those are not even on your server anyway. So it's less of an issue for that versus stuff that is being pulled out of your database on your server. Yep. Yep. Is there another hand up? Yeah. Any other questions on caching? If you, if you Google WordPress and Fireball, there's a great blog post called, called Don't Get Fireball, which explains the whole caching phase. During Fireball is a very popular blog by John Gruber, and when he moves to a site, and then the site goes down, he calls it getting Fireball because most of these sites are, are unfortunately WordPress sites. So this guy wrote a post about how to not get Fireball. That is, how not to have your site go down if John Google links to your site and during Fireball. So you know, how to set up the cache and why it's important and how the whole thing works. I'm just curious, is there a um, potential for race conditions to exist when we have one data on uh, your WordPress site? When caching can help that. If you have multiple people trying to develop the same form at the same time. So most of the times for forms, that's something that's somewhat dynamic and it won't cache that because a user has to spend the time to go on there and, and submit it and submit it. Um, caching is usually like something fast where it's just a small snapshot. It, it's, it, it won't actually cache that. And especially if your site's being hit or being pinged that often. Um, it's something that they might not be able to, to fill out. 
Next one, socialize. Say something. Um, well, it's John Bishop's plugin, and I just love it because it um, helps bring social into your website, and I think it's one of the better ones out there after playing with a whole bunch of other ones. And he responds to you if you have a problem. So John's an active member of the Boston WordPress media, so if you have questions, you can always email him. He loves, he loves it when you know. Um, I haven't used Socialize, um, but he, he's given talks. So you, you've given a talk on, on, on Socialize, um, and you know, it's great. It's great because you have the little tweet or Facebook thing at the top, and you can have a bar at the bottom, and you know, there's so many options that you can use instead of getting something from Twitter, getting something from Facebook, Trying to put it all together, it's one plugin that does it all. Do you, can you show a site that actually uses that? Yeah. Um, Technic Cam. Um, 
in theory, it's good for multi site. So I'm not sure about this plugin. Um, actually, let's take a look at it. Um, does anybody run a, a multi user site or a Mu site? Does anybody know what a Mu site is? A multi user site? You want to know more about it? So, um, what WordPress Mu is, and it used to be its own separate entity a while ago, I think before WordPress 3 came about. Um, and it was a separate install of WordPress where you could have multiple WordPress installations on one site, but it would reside under either a subdomain or a folder. So it could be example1.wordpress.com, example2.wordpress.com. Each one would have its own dashboard, admin panel, it could have its own user group, and it could be completely separate. So a lot of um, universities use it. So maybe, I know Harvard's a big one, where the law school had its own um, WordPress site, um, the business school had its own, you know, the engineering school has its own, but it's all controlled under one super admin uh, WordPress dashboard, and then you have the sub admin in each individual school. They, no, they, they would be under the subdomain. So there, there is no discrete URL, so you can't have your site.com and then your site2.com as, as you. Um, I'm not sure if this is what the plugin um, does. Let's see. It, so this is what the plugin does. It, it allows users um, to map to another blog or another site with a different domain. So it just makes it a little bit easier to connect the two sites together. Um, I actually don't know much about this, but I'll, I'll, um, okay. So, so I was just thinking from an e-commerce perspective, because uh, I own a lot of URLs that are tied to their business, so I wanted to build them all out, but make some things easy to change, like some of the style or that would have different content in each one. Yep, and, and that's what uh, WordPress Mu does. I'm oh, sorry, that's what WordPress Mu does. Um, it allows you to have different themes for each site, different plugins. All those can be controlled separately as its own individual WordPress site. But when it comes to updating plugins and updating themes, you can do that all remotely with the, the super admin panel. And so instead of having to go to each individual site, you just go to one, like update. All done. And each individual site will have its discrete URL. That's what this plugin does. That's what this does. Yes. And this plugin just goes into that main, that one single initial site that dictates what all the other ones could possibly look like. Yes. So it's almost like a, uh, a URL, a URL mapping, but built into your WordPress view. Now, what do you use? You raise your hand. I just use, like, I have a site that's um, mpba.org, and they have slash wedding, slash directory, slash um, business. So, you know, if they wanted to have their own, I didn't know about this, but if they wanted to just have, you know, weddings, Wedding videographers, a site called that, then I would think that's what this would be for, right? Yes. So this particular this particular plugin it doesn't map to subdomains; it will map to actual individual URLs. Um, it, it should. There's a there's a lot of um, there's a lot of videos out there on WordPress view. Um, yeah, so we uh, when we post the slides, um, take a look at the videos or uh, blip.tv slash Boston WP. Um, and if you search for the WordPress viewer multi-site, there's a couple of talks on there from WordCamp. Is there anything else you guys have, have questions about for plugins? Uh, 
Uh, so, so question about the socialize. Uh, I'm not sure if this one can do that, but I'm looking for a plugin that allows users to log in from SNS like Facebook and Twitter, Google, to add, so that they can leave comments on my blog using their profile pictures and yep. their nicknames. So um, either discuss D I Q U S Q U S or uh, intense debate will let you do that. And it pulls in Facebook, Twitter, Yahoo, Google um, profiles or open ID. And they can log in with either one of those profiles and then they can leave a comment. Is there any kind of plugin or other feature that would help to make a website um, show up in a mobile app? There, there are. Um, Uh, some of them are built into themes. Some themes have built-in mobile uh, sites on there. Uh, this plugin, WP Touch, um, can do that for you as well. It has 2.6 million downloads. Okay, it's very good. Sites, the site's old, and so there's lots of pages on it. But it, it helps as far as Google is concerned for ranking. Yep. But you don't need it often, and you don't need it all the time, right? No. So it's one of those things where you might install it, activate it, fix all your links, and then just delete it. And remember, maybe six months from now or a year from now, because now with Google, everything's cached. Those links should still work. Any other, any other questions? I use um, Ultimate Google Analytics, but I'm, I I think it was at this last word camp that they somebody said that you can get analytics that show up in your dashboard. Yep. And I don't know which one that is. Google Analytics will do that for you. Um, also, WordPress has its own um, WordPress has its own plugin mashup called Jetpack, and Jetpack has, I think, um, the Twitter integration. Um, actually, let's look this up right now. Um, it does have um, WordPress.com stats. So all you need to do is with Jetpack, you link your site to WordPress.com or automatic to say, hey, listen, I have a WordPress site. I want to use some of your features and functionality. Um, so it has WordPress.com stats, uh, a URL shortener. Um, Gravatars, uh, Twitter widget, um, Share Daddy, it's just another social media sharing. Um, but all of this is built into Jetpack. And it'll show up on the dashboard. It will show up on the dashboard, so it should look like something like, um, so I have two installed, I have both Google Analytics and Jetpack installed. So if you have like Google Analytics. Well, how did you, what plugin did you use for that one? It's just Google Analytics. So what you, what you can do is on the screen options, um, there's a tab right here, Google Analytics Summary. Oh. But you didn't have to use the plugin after all, it's right there. No, you do need the plugin for it. I mean, the plugin installs this feature for you. And it pulls in your, 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 uh, your stats from Google. I'm sorry, Kurt, which plugin is that? This is the Google Analytics plugin? Oh, which, which yeah, there's a Oh, man. Is there really that many? Yeah, no. it's not as loud as I have Google Analyticator. I wonder if maybe it's independent of the plugin. I don't know, it's been so long since I've downloaded this. Stats, and, and that's all I really need. Any other questions? 
there's a few that I, I would like to say. Um, oh, say. Um, there are just two things that I'd like to say. Uh, one is related to just to uh, analytics that we just talked. Uh, that will give you a whole bunch of numbers. And I would say, look at that with a, a grain of salt or a bucket of salt, but take advantage of it to improve your con the content of your, um, of your site. Because those numbers reflect something. And what they reflect is what is in your site. So use it in a productive manner and for yourself or your own good. So this is the first one. And the second thing I would like to say is make sure that you negotiate with your client or use yourself to absolutely have a beautiful way of um, making sure that you leave at the bottom of your, of your um, product who you are, who did that site, and how to find you. Because um, a lot of times people will look the product, like the product, like what they see, and they will contact you. And this is something that um, I have used, and it works. So, um, you know, the branding comes along, and, and there is an opportunity to build somebody else's site or um, help somebody to improve their own sites and then, you know, bring work for yourself. So uh, it works. So make sure, I mean, the many, many times people use this absolutely unreadable uh, font or, you know, don't put a phone that is actually, you know, a real phone or don't put a website that exists, you know, or, you know, they have discontinued. So make sure that your presence is there and it's real. So that's it. Yeah, there's a lot out there. This is, I guess this is the official one. And if you want the actual graphs, um, check out the wordpress.com stats, because that's another, another good one to use. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see you next month.